So there are 60,000 hip, 50,000 forearm and 40,000 spine fractures every year in the UK. Our research is looking to combine stem cells with a scaffold to make a living composite. And in that way we'll be able to regenerate tissue that we can apply in areas of bone knee. So even in situations where we have a hip revision surgery, so if someone's had a successful hip replacement surgery, after 10, 15 years they may have to have a second operation. And quite often all that's required is additional bone stock. So if we can come up with strategies that allow us to generate new bone, that makes us much closer to being able to apply that in that clinic to a whole range of different tissues. So generating new bone and cartilage should be simple. We know the cell type that makes bone, it's called an osteoblast, and we have a range of scaffolds that we can apply with our osteoblast with the cell that makes bone, but actually it's incredibly complex to make bone because what you have is a vibrant, living tissue. It has nerve, it has a blood supply, it needs the nutrients to keep it viable. And that's, therein lies the challenge. How do we combine the cells, and how do we combine the scaffolds to make not only this living composite, but to make a scaffold that's mechanically competent, so that it can withstand the loading that you and I take for granted every day as we run up and down the stairs, as we play sports, that mechanical loading. We need to be able to regenerate new tissue that is able to withstand our body's shocks and strains. So our ultimate aim is a synthetic scaffold that uses your stem cells and that we can then generate this living bone composite that we can put in at sites where we need new bone. And of course, if we have a synthetic scaffold, we avoid all those issues of using donor bone from other patients with issues of rejection and with issues of infection. And of course, we avoid the issues of using what we call autograft of your own bone, which can only be achieved by a surgery and actually withdrawing some of that bone from another site to put it into that defect, which is painful. And so if we can have a synthetic scaffold with the stem cells, with the right growth factors, we have this living composite. And that's what we want to do in the Bone and Joint Research Group. And that's why it's so exciting to be part of this repair and regeneration thematic within the IFLS. So in repair and regeneration, an interdisciplinary approach is absolutely essential. So what we have is this opportunity afforded by the IFLS to use proteomics, gene regulatory networks, a whole raft of imaging techniques, and in fact those imaging techniques have had a huge impact on a range of different uh, approaches in repair and regeneration, I'll talk about that in a moment, um, as well as trying to apply engineering skill sets, nanofabrication, microfluidics. So each of these are quite unique specialist disciplines, but we can start to apply them for each of our different strategies to repair our tissue of interest. So, in the musculoskeletal space, what we're trying to do is to make bone, make cartilage. We can use microfluidics to actually start to sort individual stem cells that we're interested in. If we can pull out that individual stem cell, we can actually start to see what is making that cell so unique, how do we switch on that stem cell, how do we switch it off, how do we get it to form the tissue we're interested in. We can actually start to think about imaging techniques and the IFLS has some world leading experts in imaging that allows us to use, and this is for the very first time, non-destructive, non-invasive approaches to follow our cells as they make new tissue and as they change or as they differentiate. So this is the very first time it's been possible to actually look at the ability, of, for example, in our field in musculoskeletal space, to look at a skeletal stem cell and to see how it forms fat or an adipocyte. And using non-destructive, non-invasive imaging, in real time we can follow cell fate, cell function. Now previously you would fix your cells at specific time points and then try and understand what was going on. So that just shows you how we can use just two different disciplines, imaging techniques, microfluidics, to impact on our research capability. So within the repair and regeneration thematic in IFMS, we're actually starting to have some significant impact over the last 24 months. So now with this ability to harness the expertise we have in proteomics, microfluidics, nanofabrication, imaging, just to name a few, 
we can actually start to address all of the different questions in each of our specific areas by using this multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach. How have we had an impact? Well, for example, in 2014, we undertook the first 3D hip operation with bone stem cells in the UK. This was only possible by being able to use 3D printed structures with isolated stem cells, which we've been able to model and we've been able to show the ability of the cells to colonize those scaffolds. And this was all through the interaction of the work that was done within the Institute for Neuroscience. So in the musculoskeletal arena, we've been fortunate enough to interact with world-leading microfluidics experts that's allowed us to start to develop new technologies to draw and isolate the skeletal stem cell. We've then been able to take those bone skeletal stem cell populations and combine them with scaffolds, with clays, with gels, or specifically hydrogel, and see how our cells behave in that gel, and what happens when we put a growth factor in that gel, and we've used interactions with our imaging colleagues in the Institute for Life Sciences to see how our cells behave on those gels and see what the factors have done to those cells in terms of their ability to change or to switch to a different phenotype. We've then been able to use high resolution computer tomography to see the structures that have been formed, how do they compare with the natural bone that's present in your body and my body. And then furthermore, we've actually been able to take these structures put them in vivo and looked at the ability to regenerate bone and cartilage. We've then extracted that tissue and then we've been able to combine with the engineers in the Institute for Life Sciences and start to understand the mechanical properties. Is the bone that's been made fit for purpose? Is it mechanically competent? Will it be load bearing? All of this is only possible by the synergy that's been drawn out by the IFMS consortium that's been pulled together and within the perennial generation the groups work so closely and so tightly it's been so exciting to take this work forward over the last 24